Hi traders, welcome to the live webinar with Admo Markets. My name is Chris, thanks for joining us today. We'll be taking a look at the live Forex charts, of course, currency pairs, some commodities, some stock indices uh, in just a second. First of all though, two disclaimers. The first one explains the fact that the webinar is shown to a global audience but may not be suitable for everyone. Please therefore visit AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com, select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity to find out if it is suitable for you. Also, please note that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thanks for joining uh, today. If you're perhaps joining for the first, second, or third time, feel free to reach out through the chat that is available and you can ask questions, you know, try to stop me and uh, if, if something is unclear or if you want to sh share your chart or your analysis, feel free to do so and reach out. Um, so it's a two-way communication, although of course I'm showing you the screen, I could uh, perhaps show your screenshot as well through if you send me a link for instance. All right, but in any case, uh, feel free to communicate and ask questions to clarify. Uh, because if I don't hear anything from you, then you know I, I assume uh, everything is clear. So if you signed up recently, you might have done that at the bottom of AdmiralMarkets.com. You can see here we have, of course, webinars. Uh, you'll find out a lot of information with AdmiralMarkets.com. Of course, uh, primarily uh, the most important is that you can access the markets through MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition, MT4, Web, MT4 Web Trader. Uh, and uh, you can trade all kind of uh, financial instruments, as you can see here. So the Supreme Edition has a lot of extra features that are above or on top of the usual MT4 uh, platform. But besides that, we also have here, you can see a lot of analytics. Nenet and I uh, regularly updating all kind of uh, an analysis and uh, webinars, articles. And you can check that out with analytics and education. All right, so with regards to the market, let's take a look. Uh, this is the odd USD. At this moment, I actually am not having the right template. Let me quickly switch the template, bear with me, sorry for that. I was looking at my uh, custom design system, uh, which is uh, looking at basically trading the waves, but without actually needing to know the waves. <laughs> so that's a bit of a twist maybe, but, uh, there we go. So your dollar is about to be taken out here. Uh, to be honest, it uh, it's very close, and with such a bearish candle, I don't think it has much scope or you know success rate of bouncing back. But you never know. Uh, I was targeting 117.40, uh, and hence I didn't take the profit at 117. That was, of course, a, a resistance level to reckon with as well. It's a round level uh, plus. As it breaks this top, there's always the chance that price uh, basically creates divergence and then retraces. So I took that risk and was aiming for a bit higher take profit. But I did take the long as price was breaking uh, above here, as you can see. Perhaps you saw my video in the technical analysis on Monday. Did anyone see that on Monday by any chance? So you know that I was looking for a bounce at around 116, 115. 75. Well, price bounced a bit higher than that. It bounced actually at 116.25. We're looking at intraday charts now, one hour chart, by the way, your dollar once again. And uh, so it didn't get entirely to my zone, but obviously I was bullish and I, obviously I was looking for an uptrend continuation. And I said that if there's some kind of correction pattern like this, uh, that price should continue uh, to the upside. So Although it didn't go back into 116, it, it uh, did make that pattern. And you can see right here a uh, falling wedge, perhaps, or a, a bear flag. In any case, it is a corrective pattern. It's choppy price action. If you look at the price action between the purple lines, it respected the 23.6 fibs, both fibs, no matter how you draw it. I have two fibs on this chart. Those blue lines are fibs, by the way. And uh, price broke above it. So 
My backup plan, if it doesn't retrace deep enough, I have often, as our regular uh, webinar viewers know, I have a decision zone in mind. Uh, that is where I'm basically waiting for price to go to, to reach. And then I'm looking for a break and or bounce, a break or reversal. That depends on the larger market structure uh, that is available when looking at the four hour and the daily charts. In this case, when price is retracing back to 116, I was only looking for upside. I was not looking for a bearish break below 116 or 115.75. That was not an interesting trade. Even if it would break, right, I would not be interested in trading it because the overall structure is, is, thus is so bullish that I would not want to trade it against, for the moment, not want to trade it against it. Price would have to do way more, uh, probably break below 115 for me to change that. So this is a case where I'd be only interested in a bullish basically bounce uh, at the zone I just mentioned, 116. Or if price does not get into my zone, right, which sometimes happens, obviously, like the euro dollar, uh, it bounced at 116.25. Then the backup plan that I use is waiting for a breakout above the corrective pattern. And that's what happened. Price broke out. I took the trade, put my stop loss below this bottom, right? Below 116.25, because that's the turning spot. Aimed at 117.38. Price is still, or the trade is still open, but I did move the trade to break even when it hit 117, because I didn't want to, I was up 50 pips. I don't think that's, for me, from my point of view, it was um, fine to stay in the trade, but not necessarily keep the risk of that trade open. I wanted to have the trade at break even uh, and take the risk off that trade. That's what I did. Still hanging in there, although it was very close to, to being taken out, but still alive. I think the chances of this, you know, not hitting my stop loss is probably small at this moment, but you never know. So in any case, nothing lost. And if it does still push up, then I should be able to make uh, some 80 pips on this euro dollar upside trade, right? So let's see. Um, but um, yeah, that's about it at this moment. I think that we can take a look at lower time frames uh, and see how this example trade is doing. This is an uh, example account, just a small account for uh, live webinars and it's a very awkward deep retracement to be honest so i would not trade it anymore personally um it's it's i mean if it would have been if the retracement would have been a triangle up in here it would have been pretty good still for one more trade on this chart to 117.50 but this this fall was very impulsive and it's not a good time i think to to look for for trades if price were to make a triangle and then break that triangle if it does this for instance and then breaks above this resistance somewhere in here it could still be worth taking another long and that in that case uh price has shown that this bearishness that we see is just uh, part of the correction. And uh, from that point of view, we would expect still uh, some upside continuation. So, you know, that still makes sense. But at this moment, it is an uptrend. I just don't like this particular fall. I think it is too impulsive. But it, it could still be a, a, a pullback within the uptrend. It's just that at this moment, uh, I would not want to trade it either way. Um, if you're in the trade like myself, great. You can hang on and hope for the best, right? Nothing to lose, fine. Adding new trades, I think it's just a, a bit, um, not a good moment at this moment. I would rather wait for tomorrow morning, see what kind of market structure it looks like. Does it look like a triangle or does it look like a bear flag? You know, that will give some information. How does the daily candle finish? Right, is the daily candle close near the high? That signal strength is the daily candle close all the way down here with a big wick. Well, that would signal weakness, right? So that will give us a lot of information. So I would rather, I rather wait um, 
till tomorrow for making any new decisions regarding your adult. I mean, I was definitely bullish Monday, beginning of the day, and that's what we got. But now, I, I want more information. Um, I think that's about it from the euro dollar perspective. And I think we can take a look at um, oh, one more thing, by the way, as long as price stays above 116, 116, 20, even if it were to make some type of retracement like this, it is still in bullish territory, by the way. So uh, if it doesn't make a triangle, but rather makes a zigzag like this, right? as long as it stays above 116, I think it's still in bullish territory. Uh, if price were to break below 116, once this weekly pivot point, then I would be neutral. I would be reanalyzing it. Would consider maybe shorting it at some point, but that's not even worth discussing now. It's, it's, it's too far uh, into the future. But uh, for the moment, it's still bullish territory. Just need to find a good spot. That spot could be lower. That spot could be after a triangle and break. That's all. All right, let's take a look at the dollar yen. I'm doing fine, thanks, uh, Angel. And uh, I hope that, how are you doing? I hope that you're doing fine too. And having uh, had a good weekend, I hope that everyone had a good weekend. Reloading the, the batteries, getting ready mentally. Very important to be uh, to find a balance as well. I know that it could be very uh, addictive to look at the charts. I know everything about that, <laughs> but it is good sometimes to pull ourselves away from it. Uh, great, gold. We'll take a look at that. And. But first, the dollar yen and the pound. We'll finish the, the majors uh, quickly. All right, so let's take a look at the dollar yen. Meditation, yes, good for the focus indeed. Uh, so definitely good practice. All right, dollar yen. Um, basically, at this moment, we're tracing back to the upside. And my wave analysis this morning was still having this as a wave one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, I was hesitating a bit. In retrospect, one could say that the five wave already finished actually here. Uh, at the moment when I was doing wave analysis, I, I didn't see that. I saw this as a wave three, and this is a four. And the reason has to do with the fact that the escalator actually stayed below the zero line for this entire push down. That's only something I actually realized when talking uh, to a friend and we were analyzing the charts together. And then I noticed that, that this did not actually cross the zero line. Now, that doesn't have to cross the zero line necessarily for it to be a one, two, three, four, five. Uh, even if it doesn't, it could still be a five-wave pattern. But because it didn't, uh, this was possibly finishing five waves as is. So it hit the 50 fib, as I talked about in the Monday, Monday uh, recap video, uh, and hit the resistance zone of 111.25, 111.40, where I wanted to short. So that was fine. And it stopped there and went down. Anyone trading that particular resistance zone still did well. And still, uh, to, you know, got a good entry. The only thing is it didn't go exactly to the target that I had in mind, obviously, right? Because it didn't break for a lower low. And that has, that has to do with the fact that price uh, basically completed the five wave here. So this was not a wave four, but rather a wave eight. Now, one of the heads up things you can, one of the head basically warnings, I should say, uh, that can aid you is that this didn't go back to the zero line. That's one. Two is that this is pretty impulsive price action. All right, four wave four. That is typically wave four is a triangle or bear flags like this. This was quite an impulse. All right, so second warning. Third warning is this bullish candle, which is where I took the trade off. 
as soon as that photo scandal arrived. So anyone who took the trade in the zone that I did, perhaps by any chance, uh, not that you needed to, of course, necessarily, but uh, should have, like myself, uh, been out for, you know, not nothing disastrous. A small win, break even, small loss. So those were three clues, basically. Um, if you put a FIB from here to here, right, then you see there was a 61.8 bounce. So it's basically making an ABC zigzag back to the weekly pivot point and moving average. It's completing kind of its divergence target. But the only thing is there was no divergence, though. That was actually one of the reasons why I still, I still thought that the wave five was coming, because there was no divergence here. So although those were three things in favor of an ABC, there was one major thing that was saying this is still a wave five coming. It was one of my reasons why I still left this open as a wave five. All right. But when this particular candle went against me like this, then I considered these two factors and the balance shifted from a wave four to a likely ABC. That's how price action basically informs us uh, and warns us of where price is actually going. What is it? What does it want to do? I have my own ideas about what price might do, but the price action is the decisive, it's the judge, right? It's like the decisive factor. So when, when I saw a bullish candle like that, I knew immediately, boom, that's over. The downside is out. Uh, and in fact, if anyone a more aggressive trader than myself would have maybe even jumped on a long right away to trade it back to the long to moving average. I didn't do that though. Uh, but downside was definitely over from my point of view. What's happening is an ABC, um, and we're getting a correction. Now, what type of correction? We'll need to expand our kind of view to, to know what's going on. On a four-hour chart, where the price is, I say we, but <laughs> price is uh, in a downtrend. Um, basically, I think that this could be a wave three, or it looks like a wave three. So what is the wave one, two? So from my point of view, this is probably wave one, two, and this is a three. So I think the best fib, for the moment at least, is to put it from here to here. All right, there we go. Oh, there we go. So what do we see here? This is the fib that price might be retracing. This could still be a bigger wave four. Not a wave four of a smaller chart. Not a wave four of this this time frame, right? Like this. No. But rather that this is a wave five of three, and we're going up for a bigger wave four of the entire wave three. So um, could this be an ABC? It could. Uh, if it is, then price should stop at the minus 272, minus 61.8 target. And it's very close to the minus 61.8 target, which is equal to the 38.2 FIB. All right, so 111.75 could be uh, a resistance spot to reckon with. There's no divergence between these tops, by the way, but that's not necessarily needed with an ABC. All right, so is it worth shorting here? Um, yes and no. Uh, it is because it's a strong resistance. There's a moving average, there's a minus 61.8 target, a weekly pivot point, and there is broken bottoms on the left. So I think there is sufficient reason to go short um, without necessarily price action candlestick patterns, in my humble uh, opinion, with a stop loss probably above this top at one, above 112. All right, and aiming at 110.30. So about 130 potential reward and 45 risk. What a three to one trade. The alternative, and I you know, typically prefer that on average, at least with some exceptions, is to wait for price action to confirm the turn at this resistance zone with either one hour or four hour candles, or to wait for price to hit the zone, turn with some, some impulse, making consolidation like this, and then 
break and take the break, for instance, here. So wait for price to, to make a turn rather than, because price is moving up now. So rather than trade against that, although the trend is down, you kind of wait for that to be confirmed and trade it just a tad later, either through candlestick patterns or through chart patterns or time patterns. So that's an interesting spot. It, it could, of course, one of the reasons why that's interesting to wait for confirmation is that price ultimately could get to the 50 fib. It does, there's no rule that price that says that price cannot get up to the 50 fib in a wave four. Also, what could happen is that this is just wave fours tend to be expansive. They tend to be lengthy. So what could happen is that this is just part of the correction. This is ABC. But the correction expands with a W, X, Y. For those that don't like waves, don't necessarily you know, get confused by the letters. But basically, what can happen is that there's another ABC and then another ABC. All right. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, but if shorting, if there is a good short up down in, up in here or after some candlestick patterns, if, we, if there's a three-wave pattern, then you want to get out and, or move to break even. Because then there could be a big, a bigger bounce again up. But that's more like trade management. If price breaks above 112.10, 112.50, that's when I would consider the chart not to be bearish anymore. And you know, it's it's, it's a bearish trend as long as price stays below the R1 here. Uh, then this could be an easy retracement for one more downside. And the reason is that what is the most recent higher, uh, lower high? This one. So if price breaks above that, we already have a higher high. That's not good for a downtrend, obviously. So if price stays below this and goes here or here, then we have another lower high. And that confirms the trend. That's another reason. Alrighty, so next on the list is quickly pound. Uh, pound did move to the upside, broke slowly above the weekly pivot point, then hooked back to it, now bouncing back up and is making this channel, but I don't think it's that interesting at this moment. Uh, it already bounced out the bottom of the channel, bounced at the top of the channel. Now it's in the middle. So it doesn't seem interesting at this point. If it does break below the pivot point, weekly pivot point, and the channel, I think there's a good breakout trade to the downside from the weekly pivot point down to the S1 target. That could be interesting. If price bounces at the weekly pivot point, it could still go to the R1. So it could be interesting if price hooks back to 130. Uh, that could be an interesting bounce or break spot, um, depending on the candlestick patterns that occur at the weekly pivot point. And there could be a trade, subsequent trade to the downside or to the upside, to R1, to S1. Uh, that, I think, is the most interesting at the moment with, uh, with the pound. All right. Uh, let's see some comments here from Angel. Let's see. Oh, that's regarding gold. We'll take a look at that. And Joshua is asking about Euro Yen. We'll take a look at that after gold right away. So there we go. Gold is bouncing considerably. I think we we're talking about yeah, pound yen certainly. We we'll take a look at that too. Uh, about the potential for price to make one more higher high and then make a correction. Um, if I remember correctly, is that correct, Angel? <laughs> Angel might know it better than um, than myself at this moment. I think we were talking about it last week, somewhere in here. And if I remember correctly, I was looking for one more higher high. But anyhow, we, it, it was in any case, it, it did indeed happened. We got a one more push, and our price is slowly but surely moving down. So let's take a look at this on the hourly chart.
So when looking at this hourly chart, it looks like it completed five waves. Sorry for bothering you with all these waves, but I just tend to see them at this today's a lot. Um, and I would expect from this point of view, it does look like we have five waves up, we have an ABC correction, and we have five waves up. So what does that tell us? It tells us that, all right, we had a 50% bounce and we have five internal waves. So we could expect an ABC that shouldn't break the bottom here. And we should see a bounce and this could be the wave three of three. That could be of a C or a three. I don't know, it could mean, it almost seems a bit, um, you know, how do you say it, like um, tempting because uh, a wave three or three could have potential, right? Uh, even if it is part of wave C. Now, I'm not 100% sure, of course, this is just analysis and uh, the potential for that, but I think that is a possibility. So one thing, the next thing to look for is an ABC that doesn't break this bottom. If that is the case, then there could be another upside coming. Uh, just quickly, how do you draw the pivot points? It's actually done automatically when you add the Admiral Markets Pivot Point Indicator, uh, Admiral Markets Pivot. And if you don't have this in your MT4, then the only thing you need to do is, is go to admiralmarkets.com, click on platforms, click on MetaTrader 4 MT4 Supreme Edition. And it's a free download and you can test it for a month. If you have Admiral Markets account, you can keep, that, keep using it. Um, at least that's how it used to be. I guess it still is, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and this extra Supreme Edition basically has a ton of extra features, including this pivot point, but also the Keltner indicator. Uh, so a lot of indicators, but also extra management, risk management features, and some, some back testing software. So you can check it out here and you'll see all the advantages. A lot of extra stuff there. So that's how you can get these pivot points. And these pivot points are redrawn automatically each and every day or each and every week or month. Right, depends what, what you choose. So back to, so no, from this perspective, I am not expecting 1172 because I don't think that this bottom is gonna be broken. And this bottom, I'll tell you, or I hope to tell you, one second. The low is 1204.77. All right, so from this perspective, I don't expect a break and I expect price to respect this, uh, this swing. All right, there we go. All right, and uh, from this perspective, I think the price should get a deeper retracement to the 61.8. I think what should happen is price gets to the weekly pivot point, bounces there, and then makes this dash down here, or something like this. Either the you know the 23.6 or the 38 will provide a bounce. There'll be weakness here. There'll be one more push down, and then there should be a bounce, perhaps at the 61.8 for an upside again. So the most interesting trade from my perspective is here the bullish bounce at the 61.8. It could be the 76, 78.6, it could be the 52, it could be the 88.6 fib, it could be any of these fibs, but typically it is not the shallow fibs, wave two is typically not shallow, and it should not go below this bottom, no. But anything in this particular zone is possible. One way we can, what we can do is put a fib on this retracement and we'll get targets. And now also the minus 61.8 target uh, or minus 272 target, both are typical targets for uh, an ABC. So yeah, that's that's my view basically for, for gold. So what if, what if I, you know, my analysis doesn't take place? I will know that this is invalidated if price goes below this bottom, that's clear. I also know that if price were to have a downside upside, but then it goes like this, and then starts breaking above this resistance trend line, 
like this. All right, then price, for whatever reason, might be doing something else. But I would definitely need to see a triangle formation before I would consider a deeper retracement not likely. Now, Angel is talking about a weekly chart. So let's take a quick look at that and then we'll take a look at the others. And it's talking about I'm not sure. Let's see. 11.72 is 61.8 Fib. Weekly 2015. 11.029. 11 ah, here. Got it. Yes, if you use that swing like this there we go you see that fib this particular fib uh, has already been broken because price bounced up to 78.6 fib so i'm not saying that that level is not necessarily important but not from my point of view not because of this fib once price breaks through a fib it, it basically is not, it's broken. So it did bounce it to 78.6 fib. Now that level could be important for different reasons. Uh, but from my perspective, uh, it looks like an ABC has been completed. It wasn't so sure because this retracement could still be part of a bigger retracement that goes down to, to this bottom, right? And could go down to 1170, as you said. Uh, and if my analysis of this particular upside is wrong, that could be a very valid target. This could be an upside, this could be a correction, and still upside from 1170. But due to this upside, my analysis says that uh, 1170 will probably not get reached because I think that this will bounce like this. And I would expect that there was a flat correction here, right, flat. Uh, so, Urian. All right. Now, obviously, an uptrend. We can. I'm having this template open already, so you can see. This is my uh, SWOT viewing point, and the great thing about it is that you kind of have a roadmap uh, with understanding waves and how they relate to moving averages. So when you look at price action, price action waves, sorry, price action moving averages, you can actually have a roadmap of how, you know, the, the patterns unfold. So it's not as, as maybe some traders think that wave analysis is only using wave theory or wave rules and guidelines. I'm sure that, by the way, some traders are out there that only use that, and that's fine. But based on my theory and methods, uh, the moving averages provide kind of structure to understand in a simple way how uh, wave analysis, uh, the wave structure, the market structure, and the psychology are doing. So that's the biggest advantage. And when we look at that and analyze that, uh, there was a potential for an ABC correction because of the divergence between these, these tops. All right, we we got that, uh, and then price moved above it, and then it got a get a correction. Uh, but now that price is breaking above it, I think that there is a good chance it will continue. Um, now you never know with flat corrections like this, because in the meantime it's turned into a flat correction, right. and it has to do with the divergence. Uh, that's why anyone who was looking for upside trades in here was way too early. Uh, because there was divergence, and hence, 
uh, you know, a correction like this was possible. This could have been an ABC zigzag. It didn't happen. But this is, could have been an A. This could have been a B. And this could have been a C. So anyone looking for longs till now didn't do too well, probably. It was, was looking too soon. So now the things are changing a little bit because price is going sideways. And uh, from this perspective, I think an uptrend continuation is becoming more likely. From my perspective, it depends. This is breakout attempt at number three. Number one is here. Number two is here. Number three is here. So it is becoming now likely that upside is possible because the first two typically when you have a consolidation like that are probes or, or tests. Uh, so at least the first one like this, when you have divergence, I'm talking about divergence once again, right? Especially the first one. Uh, and then the second could also sometimes appear. Uh, with, what I mean with that is that the second one might not break. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but the third one is, is more, more reliable. So what I'll be curious about is to see how price uh, retraces to these moving averages. Let's take a look at the hourly chart. If it uses these, uh, these moving averages, 21 EMAs on the hourly chart, and price hits that and stops, and then it starts to move up like that, I think it's a good breakout for continuation on the EURN, in my view. Let's use the uh, other template again. So yeah, that's about it, I guess, for the moment. Definitely, I was looking for a retracement on the euro yen, and we got it. We got, but this, it's a sideways correction rather than a correction that is moving actively back to the moving averages. It is a correction where price is going sideways. So when is that correction over? We'll never know for sure. But uh, this is not a triangle because if you have, if you look at the current high is 130.58. This high is 50. So this, this high already broke the previous high. So this is not an A, B, C, D, E anymore. No, it can't be that. Um, so it would have to be... I don't think a deeper retracement is likely anymore. If anything, I think the dollar yen could go back to test these bottoms. That is possible. So it depends on how price will respond uh, to these moving averages. If it if it doesn't bounce there or if it goes sideways like that, I wouldn't be looking for any uh, longs. It could make basically a correction deeper. But if it makes a triangle and then breaks, it's something different. It could be ready already for upside. So I might be interested in a breakout, perhaps depending on the structure and patterns of the market, or I'll be looking for price to get down lower and for a bounce again. All right, let's take a look at Pion. Thank, thanks for that, Angel, regarding uh, the praise on the, on gold. Great to hear that. And Appreciate all of your comments. Pound yen is, uh, well, messy. <laughs> but I was thinking about it this morning. And uh, when looking at the four-hour chart, I think that there's, there's still a chance that this is a retracement. I, I remember last week talking about the fact that this could be, you still find support probably here as it bounces off of the resistance. It's still above the 50 fib, so as long as it's 50, it's I'm still, I think, in a, in a bullish environment. And if you look at this downside, it could be an A, B, C correction. The bullish price action kind of could fit within that. 
So what does that mean? That means that this could be a wave one, two, three, and this is still a four. It's possible as long as it stays above this area. This is pretty choppy as well, so this could be a correction, A, B, C. So what would be another confirmation? An internal five wave on a lower time frame. So if price were to bounce off this weekly pivot and then head up like this, that could be a five wave completed. You see that? Once price does that, I would expect an ABC to finish wave two, a turn at the 61.8 fib, roughly speaking, you know, anywhere between 50 and 88.6 fib, but not breaking this bottom, and then heading up again from there. So when looking at this roadmap, what's the most interesting trade? The most interesting trade is after price has completed the wave four, the wave five, the A, the B, and the C, and it's starting the wave one of wave three. That's for me the most interesting. So whether price will actually uh, bounce, that's something that will be interesting. And therefore, on a 15-minute chart, it would be interesting to put a fib from here to here. And it should bounce at the 38.2 fib. So intraday traders right, could find it interesting to look at a trade at 114, 145, 145.25, but not below this top. It shouldn't go below this top because otherwise the wave four is invalidated. So one of these two fibs and then move up to 146.25, 146.50, like this. And then shoot down. Excuse me. So um, let's see if price if price stops at this weekly pivot point. Uh, you know, the, the, it's kind of the same as the euro yen. Will the euro yen also stop at support or will it retrace lower? Same question. So, that, oh, odd yen, one more, yeah. Let's take a look at that. And that might be, that could be pretty similar. There we go. All right, so we are looking at let's take a look at this four hour chart. All right, Adyen has a divergence too between the tops. So it is also running the risk of an ABC. And from that perspective, I would be a bit cautious with the odd end at this moment. Just like with the Euro Yen, Pound Yen, of course, more confirmation is needed. It's not necessarily upside yet. I, I want to see at least uh, you know some more confirmation that the price will move up. Uh, but um, this one, it's a strong trend, but I would need to see price make a triangle here. I don't think it will break immediately. Here. I think it's uh, would need to make a downside like this and upside and down and then break that triangle for me to be interested. Uh, it could break the R1 and keep keep going up, but it would not be a trade that I would be uh, you know looking for to trade personally. It's a bit short, 
So, but that's what I'll be looking for. Either a triangle or or that's it actually. Or I'll just wait. Alrighty. Anyone else have any questions or you know any uh, pair in mind that you would take a look at? Maybe one more we can take a look at. I think the pound odd personally is interesting. Uh, let's take a look at that. I'm hoping for um, a break here. If it does break, it could be an interesting trade like this. If there's a good breakout candle, there's a good correction here like that. So let's see if, if it gets to break. If it does, I think there's a good space down to S1, 162. Dollar CAD is, boy oh boy, falling strongly, <laughs> massively. But it is at the previous support level on the weekly chart. And there is divergence on the four hour chart, double divergence. So I think this trend is uh, a bit overstretched now at this moment. And I think that on paper, at least, there's a, there should be an opportunity for price to get back to the long term moving average with an ABC, especially because it's at the S3, it hit the 125 and the previous support. So, you know, from that perspective, it could be in a position. There's also divergence between these bottoms. There's a potential, let me check. Is that is it a falling wedge pattern? Not really, it's a channel. So as soon as there's a break of this channel and the weekly pivot point, I think there's a good chance of an ABC like this. But you know, you never know. Trends are strong. They can push more than, than you think. But uh, I wouldn't trade it to the downside. Uh, if anything, I'm trying to find a smart reversal trade, but not now, personally. I mean, it's although I mean, in theory, everything is possible, of course. Um, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth candle. So if this candle were to close, a bounce might be already happening as we speak. But um, it's riskier. Obviously, then waiting for the downtrend channel to to first break. Uh, Eurocat, that is a particular currency pair that I haven't checked in a while, so I'll look at it. But I just need I need to a minute or two to get my uh, bearings on that one. There we go. Uh, regarding FO, FOMC meeting, I'm not 100% sure at this moment. I'll have to do a bit more research still. But I think that ultimately the reaction will be on the milder side. Of course, within the normal volatility that we can always expect with a big event like that. Uh, I think that, uh, from my perspective, the dollar looks still still weak um, under your dollar and pound dollar. And I, I don't think that that will necessarily change, but an event like that, of course, always could have that impact depending on exactly how those things unfold. Um, I mean, the, the interest rate rate should stay the same. I don't expect a change on that. So for the moment, as long as the euro dollar stays above this, this pivot point, uh, I, I stay bullish, basically. Here a cat is... All right.
Well, well, well. Um... Quite messy and rangy at this moment. Any particular time frame you're looking at? Divergence between the bottoms. Four hour chart, okay. Uh, I would normally expect price to go to the long term moving average because of the divergence, but honestly, it, it just missed it by a few pips here. So I think that target has been already hit. Um, I'm not sure about this one. It overall, I would say it looks bearish just because of the recent price action indeed. Double top. So from this perspective, I would be more inclined to bearishness. would probably need a close below this weekly pivot point. So engulfing twins here or the break of this trend line. Yeah, it could be worth maybe trading. I, I don't, not a big fan of this particular, uh, these, this particular pair, to be honest. Um, but that's just, you know, everyone has their own lens and I just don't see anything that, that clicks when looking at these charts somehow. So I, therefore, I'm not a really a big fan of it, but um, I do think that if it breaks the support line, I could see the potential for this to to just be a correction, and then a breakout could could occur to the downside. You know, there's there is momentum to the downside here, so this could be momentum correction continuation. All right. Folks, thanks so much for joining. More webinars, uh, of course, uh, later this week with uh, Admin Markets Education, Forex, and CFD webinars. That's how you can find us. If you're interested in those pivot point indicators, calendar indicators, MetaTrader 4, MT4, Supreme Edition, click on free download. Thanks for joining and spending the time uh, with me. Glad that you were here. And uh, wish you all great trading, folks. Cheers.